It is a new dawn. Fresh breeze and the first rays of sunlight brightens up the days of people in Jaffna. The town is slowly rising to start the day, to go to the temple, to send kids to school, to carry out what couldn't be finished the previous day. The journey is long, the sky is clear, and the aim is to go to the other shore, rowing across the lake for a brighter day. We are going to tell the story of four such people whose life is a struggle every day for different reasons. Four different tales that shows us living is a battle which has to be fought every day. Navaleshwaran, a father a breadwinner and a war victim. It is a story of a man with strong determination. He lives in Thalavithi, although he is a native of Thelipale. He has been displaced since 1990 due to the conflict and he finally settled in Thalavithi. Being a father of seven and having an ailing sister with him, he shoulders a lot of responsibilities with his wife. On the 4th of August in 1994, he lost his leg for an antipersonal mine when he went to cut wood. Since then, his life was a terrifying task with seven mouths to feed. Also, three of his five children are grown-up girls. Putting food on plates and sending them to school were challenging. His wife is earning a living ranging from 300 rupees to 350 rupees a day. It is difficult to feed all of them and yet they manage. He is doing manual labor and no one gives him a permanent job due to his disability. Thus his wife brings onions on her way from work which they process at home to sell so that they could find some extra money to live. Navaleshwaran is happy to have his house which he got from the Indian government through the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies along with the Sri Lanka Red Cross. This is the story of many. What could strengthen their lives is a better income which could help them to live in dignity. The situation could be worse in a household where the woman is the breadwinner because the hardships they have to face are endless. This is the story of one such family with six girls and a boy. They lost one of their sisters and a brother to a shell. Theirs was a better life before the demise of her father in 2001. <laughs> They have a shop and yet they are not able to provide themselves with the items to run a shop. All she needs is a living to go on in her day-to-day -day life a means to make her small business a story of success. Having a house to live has made their lives less difficult, but they need to be backed with a proper livelihood 
so that they could look forward with hope. Kanda Swami Subhashini has a similar story. Her father died from a cancer in 2008. It is her mother who is doing manual labor earning only 350 rupees per day, which is not at all sufficient for a family with five. Subhashini has three young sisters to take care of. All four of them have learned sewing, yet they are deprived of the means to make a living out of sewing. They are happy to have the house donated from the Indian government and the Red Cross. All three of them have one plea, one request, that is to help them earn a living. All of them have skills such as sewing, which makes it a lot easy to transform these skills into livelihoods. The story we are going to tell now is a successful one. It is a story of a man who has been able to cultivate with his wife. Vellasami in Krishnapuram Kilinochi grows vegetables and do animal husbandry in the backyard as adequate income for them to live. <laughs> Well, Asami has a garden full of lime and vegetables such as cabbage and tomatoes which he takes to the market on his bicycle. In the meantime, his wife waters the plants and feeds the chicken. He and his wife spends most of their time taking care of their farm. At the end of the day, it is blissful to take harvest home, which they sell in the market. It was about three years ago when we started the first program, just supporting 200 families in Kirinochi. Today we have reached, I'm humbly proud to say that we have reached 3,000 families supported out of that program. With the support of the Indian government, we could actually expand that support to further 16,800 in all. We will support 20,000 families as we are providing shelter, we are providing assistance in disaster management, we are providing health. We should not forget that they are still in need of livelihood assistance. Loss, uncertainty and fear had crippled the lives of Sri Lankans for more than three decades. The war has shattered the hopes of people depriving them of their loved ones, livelihood and a home to live. Their lives have come to a stalemate. There was nothing but despair, agony and suffering. An ordinary life was far away from them until it all ended in 2009, bringing back hope, life and a smile. The war ended paving the way towards a better tomorrow, a tomorrow where they could earn a living, go to school and to sleep in peace. Gone are the days where they had to flee seeking refuge. Terror was replaced with hope. Grief was taken over by joy. The sounds of guns were silenced. It was the day of a new beginning. Kilinochi, one of the worst affected districts in the north, has been almost deserted. The liberation of tigers of Tamil Elam or the LTTE captured the city in 1990, making it their de facto capital. The Sri Lankan armed forces reclaimed it in 2009 with the defeat of the tiger guerrillas. 
The area is predominantly Tamil and has been an agrarian cultivation destination since the ancient time. Being located 345 kilometers from Colombo, the capital city of the island, Kilinochi is the capital of one area in the country. Today it is rising through ashes, putting all the bitter memories into the past. Finally, they are happy to be in a place which they can call home. Sri Lanka Red Cross has been contributing to the sustainable rehabilitation and reconstruction of the people of once war torn Kilinochi. Sri Lanka Red Cross, in cooperation with the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, was operating in areas controlled by the LTTE, assisting the affected people in 2008 and 2009. Sri Lanka Red Cross and its partners launched a program in 2010 to help the people of Kilinochi and surrounding areas to rebuild their houses. Construction of new houses following the owner-driven approach has been the cornerstone of the program while addressing dimensions such as water and sanitation, healthcare, livelihood and infrastructure that would eventually upgrade the living standards of the people who had fallen prey to the brutalities and severe atrocities traumatized them beyond imagination. The effort has been made by Sri Lanka Red Cross to put a roof over the heads of many. It also has sought to aid people to recover their livelihoods, thereby leading to the post-war recovery of the communities. Sri Lanka Red Cross identified the need to restore the torn lives not only through provisions of grants but also through the enhancement of decent living by the launch of the health programs and vocational trainings. As far as this program is concerned, you know this is an integrated program which uh, uh, the, the, the name of program is Red Cross Post Conflict Recovery Program that covers the people, entire people from the north who has been affected by the conflict uh, uh, since many years and especially after 2009. But the key part of these houses, as, as you know, uh, we have uh, started this program with the livelihood component and water sanitation and so many other components as an integral, integral part of the program. But in this, in this 16,800 houses, we are really looking forward to have a more support from the partners across the world to support us to enhance the livelihood of the people, the most vulnerable people in the ground. The Red Cross post-conflict recovery program has been effectively in action since April 2010, with the support from the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies and other Red Cross and Red Crescent movement partners. The program primarily aims those who have been displaced and who are now in the process of resettling. Sri Lanka Red Cross is now aiming to build over 20,000 new houses as a part and parcel of the post-conflict recovery program with the funds it received from the government of India. But we strongly believe, and it's our ultimate goal, that the full package, the full package should be delivered to the people, means construction of the house to provide proper water sanitation component but also what is extremely important is to provide people uh, possibilities to do some sort of livelihood programs which definitely will support the adequate and normal uh, level of life. Moreover, Sri Lanka Red Cross identified that houses alone would not be sufficient for these people who have undergone a civil war for over 30 years. Much has been done and a lot more has to be done on behalf of those in need of help following a brutal war which had uprooted them from their livelihoods. Livelihoods are the icing on the cake. It get people out of a poverty trap, right? You get a house, but it doesn't get you out of the poverty trap. To get out of the poverty trap, you really need an income coming into the family, growing crops, animals, animal uh, husbandry, We've helped people make ice cream cakes, potters. I came across a man two weeks ago who, through one livelihood grant from the Red Cross, now has a bicycle repair shop. And he said he's making much more out of the bicycle repair shop than he is of four acres of land. So it just shows you how that livelihood can really get people out of the poverty trap. They have been traumatized and all they ask for is a way to upgrade their living standards. 
We will be strengthening the whole nation by extending a helping hand to these people who are struggling with life to feed several mouths. Having elder sisters who are passing their chances of being married off, mouths to be fed and dependents to be taken care of. These are the issues they all have at the end of the day. Theirs are the skills that could be transformed into a better living. They need your assistance. They need the external support to build their lives. They look on with eyes full of hope. It is your turn to do something for them. It is the responsibility of all of us to lift them up from their current status. Let us get together to bring them joy and smiles so that it will be a brighter day that will dawn on them tomorrow.